Gary here for GenVFX. Welcome back to a new tutorial. Yes, it's been a while. I'm very sorry. I've been kind of busy. Nonetheless, I uh, got to get more of these done uh, because I haven't done them for ages and I'm really missing doing them. So to ease back into what is going to be a quite a big regimen of doing these, I just wanted to do a quick tutorial. But it's one that I think is, is quite good because not a lot of people realize that when you use a UV map in Blender, you can use a different UV map. Yeah, I'm talking about UV coordinates, multiple UV coordinates, and how to combine them together to create beautiful artwork. Anyway, without further ado, let's just get on with that, and then I'll chat to you when it's over. So let's just open our scene, and it's very simple. It's just a cube. There's nothing else to it. It's just a cube. And the point of this is that if I go into UV mapping, I'm going to add nothing to this at all. Uh, if we're going to UV mapping, we have a look. It's just a very standard kind of like shape like this. But uh, I don't want to mess around with these UV mapping points because it'll mess with my texturing, which it doesn't exist yet, but will do. So let's very quickly do this. Let's give it some texturing. So I'm going to add into this a very simple texture. I'm going to add in a Voronoi and I'm going to stick the color of this into the base. And it's going to go and give me that. But what I want to do is I want to use the UVs. I don't want to use it procedurally. So I'm going to go here, go Control T, because I've got Node Wrangler turned on. I'm going to take that and UV and stick that into the vector. And you'll see that it now, obviously, you see it doesn't match up in places because if we look at the UV texturing, I'm going to turn this back here to the render view. There we are. You see that uh, it's using the placement of the polygons. Let's just turn into UV sync mode. So it's using this this polygon, this the top, and that one's there, and that one's there. And because these two edges don't match up, this one here, this one here, that's why that doesn't match up. But this is the point. We're just going for this. I'm trying to explain something in terms of UVs. And I, I'll probably do it quickly because I've tried to do it more complicatedly with a beautiful big thing, and uh, it just takes too long and it doesn't really help. So what I want to do is I want to add stuff to this. I want to add information on top of this uh, from another file, another image file. But I can't edit that image file either because it's like an asset. So I want to be able to basically use it like a, almost like a decal, be able to stick it on top. But it's not a decal. I need to be able to create a new set of UVs. And that you can do that if we're in our object here right now. This object has got cube. It's got UV maps on there. It's got a UV map, but look, look, there's a little plus button there. So if I click on that, I can create another UV map. And if we look up here, if we just move across with the middle mouse button, it's got UV map one. I'm just gonna call this a map. Okay, brand new map, a map. You can see that's there. Now what I can do is if I move this, and as long as I'm in UV sync, yep, as long as I'm in UV sync, I'm that there. If I move this, it disconnects it. If I move this, it disconnects it. If I move this, it disconnects it. But you'll notice nothing's happening here because this, of course, is using the UV map that comes standard, which is just called UV map. It just looks and goes, I just want UV map. Right, so I'm going to load in an image here, which is an image that I use for displacing. And let's go texture and let's go image texture, do this. And I'm going to go open and displace details. And the reason I'm going to use displace details is because they're particularly well spaced out stuff. I'm going to drag this color and drop it into the surface. Boom. Now you'll see a bunch of textual stuff appearing. Let's go back to UV editing and you can see here they are like this and you can see they're just sitting like this. So if I take this one here, which is the front one, is the front one? Yep, the front one. And I go, right, I want to move this to here. You'll notice it's not showing up on here. It's not showing any of the changes on a map here. And there's a reason for that. It's because in the shading, you're still, even though nothing's connected to it, it's looking at UV map. So let's go add input and let's go UV map connected to a map, which you can see because you have a map, you've written and created a map. And I'm going to plug this in. Now watch the cube. What happens to the cube when I plug this in? Boop. It's now suddenly put these textures where they are in the UV editor. So let's go to the UV editor and look. Say, so, right, okay, well, I want, let's scale this down. I want that on that face. And what's this? Where's this one? Where's this one? That's the bottom. Let's put that on the bottom. Let's move it to there. And let's take this one and let's move it to here. Let's scale it down so it fits there like that. And then I want this one. Let's scale this one down. In fact, let's let's just select all of these faces. That's very quickly. Let's get all these faces, all of them. And let's go here. Let's do something which you can do in here which is we can go into the UV menu and go 
UV, average island scale, UV, pack islands. Uh, let's not change the scale. Let's not rotate them. Let's go OK. There you go. So I could take all of this, let's just scale them all down. So they're all the same size and pick that one, place that one there. That one can go there. That one can go over that one. That one can go over that one. This one, well, let's pop this over both of these, but let's make it so it's kind of not in the center, just to be different. And let's take this one here and let's place this one right in the middle of that crosshair. But just to make it even more Let's just go RX45. There you go. So each one of these now has got all those stuff on those faces because if we look at the shading, that is going into that UV map there. Yeah. Okay. So let's put this back into here. So that's using the original UV. The other one that you just you saw was using a separate UV. Now that's all grays, so that if I wanted to, I could take this and if we change this over here. And let's change this from EV into cycles. And let's go to the textual thing down here. Let's actually, let's go up here first and change this to experimental because for some reason it's the only way to do stuff. Still don't understand why that's still there. And then we go down to the shading and we set in the settings, bump only to displacement and bump. I'm going to add into this a displacement vector. Got to take this map, pull it down here over here like so. Let's take this colour, pop it into the height, set that scale at 0.1, take displacement and pop it into there. And straight away you can see that it is displacing. It's doing it like a bump, but if we go into, I think, I think, if I add onto this generate subject, subdivision surface, got adaptive resolution, and set it to simple. Right. <laughs> Leave it on, get more clock. Actually, that's quite sweet. I quite like that. <laughs> Accidental loveliness. Let's just turn off my better cam. There we go. You see where it's popping inwards and sticking out. Do the same there. Oh dear, that needs some extras. So point two. There you go. Look at that. So let's just go back to the simple mode. Let's add a bevel. I'm going to put the bevel above. Come on, clock it. And there we go. So what you've got there now is you've got one texture, which is coming from the UV map of your Voronoi, and the other texture, which is coming from the displacement, which we plugged into there. Doesn't have to be used a displacement, just to prove a point. Uh, let's add another shader in the middle. Let's add uh, a, let's add a principal BSDF. Pop that there. Let's add a mix shader. So pop the mix shader in there. Let's get this into the top, which means it'll be at the bottom. Put this in the bottom, which means it'll be at the top. Makes no sense. And then take that shader and plug that into there. We'll just have, it'll just go half and half, which is nice. Arf and arf. And then we will need something to separate the two off. So we get either not just the white, and not just the other one. We'll take the color of this and drop it into the factor. And then we'll start to see a little bit of one color in the other and one color in the absolute opposite. And I'm gonna add into this a converter, which is a color ramp, so we can kind of like clamp the colors. And then if I do this, you can see that we're only getting the colors in the gaps. So what we need to do is very quickly Change these two colours around. And now we see we're now getting the watery, watery white one in the gaps. So let's just try and to There we go. And that's it. That's it really. It's not very complicated. It's just Really nice to be able to see that you can actually get different UV maps and actually use them for different purposes on objects. And that's it really. That's it. Just 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 nice stuff. If I go, in fact, let's go into this shader. Let's make it black. There we go. There you go. So you can see just the 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 good use 
of such things. Uh, saves you time, gives you detail, and uh, obviously uh, doesn't affect any other UV map. Just using multiple ones. So there you have it. It's really simple to create separate UV maps and use those with other textures to add detail on top of what you've got and keep on layering these through. It's great. You can do great, great things with it, whether it's, you know, a wall going from brick to primer to paint to damage to dirt and then, you know, painting out through with weight paints so you get them all sort of like combining together. It looks chef's kiss perfect. Can I just say thank you for uh, listening in? and watching it's always great to do these and i'm always very very pleased to see that people seem to be liking them which is great i just still can't quite believe it so if you do like them don't forget to like and subscribe and also leave a comment below uh, you never know i may end up using it as a tutorial i have in the past and i will in the future uh, so yeah uh keep in touch and um, i will see you on the next one